Hey, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Okay, in part one of this tutorial, we changed a sunny day into a cloudy day. But you know what? It's not enough that I want to take your sunshine away. Oh no. I'm going to kick it up a few notches and rain on your parade. Did I already use that joke in part one, maybe? Well, too bad. We're still going to rain on your parade. And by that, I mean that we'll be adding rain into our shot. And we'll look at a few other cool compositing techniques, too. That's right. These effects are serious. We're doing some serious effects and compositing. Wait, I, I think I might have ripped that off from somewhere. Andrew Kramer, I will make that up to you by reminding people that they can get your awesome Creative Cow Master Series DVD, Serious Effects and Compositing, among other great training DVDs, <clears throat> such as my own, at uh, training.creativecow.net. Anyway, let's get some rain in there, shall we? So, here in my After Effects composition, let's choose Layer, New, Solid. And in the Solid settings, let's get the color to be 50% gray. In the Color Chooser, set each of the red, green, and blue values to 128. Then, back in the Solid settings, make sure it's the same size as the composition. Let's also rename the layer to Rain to avoid confusion later. Click OK to confirm the creation of our gray solid. Next, in the timeline, make sure the solid is at the top of your composition stack order. It should be, but just make sure. And then with the solid selected, choose Effect, Simulation, CC Rain. Now as you can see, we have some rain, but it's not showing through to the rest of the composition. Instead, all I have is rain on a gray solid. The effect was designed to go over video or a nested composition, but I don't think they had complex compositing in mind when this was created. Fortunately though, we can use layer transfer modes here to show just the rain and not the solid. In the timeline, set the rain layer to have a transfer mode of overlay. The reason I wanted to use a 50% gray for the solid is because it's the only color that doesn't show through in the overlay mode. Well, this looks better, but the rain is blue. Let's just desaturate this by selecting my rain layer and choosing Effect, Color Correction, Hue, and Saturation. Then in the Effects panel, set the Master Saturation down to negative 100, which removes all color from the rain. Let me be straight with you here. I don't love the effect called CC Rain. Personally, I think you're better off using an advanced particle system such as Trap Code Particular or a program like Wonder Touch Particle Illusion or even possibly a program like Cinema 4D. Now I'd like to make this feel like we're really in bad weather. I want to feel the wind. I don't mean that literally, of course, but I mean that I'd like to feel that it's a windy day, as you might get in weather like this. Now don't get mad at me here, because I'm going to use an element that you may not be able to create on your own. When you're working on a complex project, not everything can be done in After Effects. Yeah, I know, I know you don't want to hear that, but it's the truth of it. A while back I worked on a project where I needed to add some trees into the foreground of a CGI shot to give it some realism. And using Maya Paint effects, I created some animated trees. In the end, they looked like this. Now you can handle creating an element like that in several ways. You can try and film some trees with the blue sky behind it and key out the blue. Or you can use a 3D program like Cinema 4D and use one of the 3D tree creation plugins such as Greenworks XFrog, which is also available as a plugin for Maya as well as being a standalone application that can export to many other 3D programs. Greenworks XFrog is definitely worth looking into if you have to create trees uh, and maybe tree growth animation or anything like that. But there are also many other options um, such as DPIT Nature Spirit and also Digital Element Plant Mechanic and uh, Onyx Tree Storm, just to name a few that I know of. Honestly, I don't have too much experience with any of these products, but hopefully it'll give you a good starting point for doing your research if you want to do this sort of thing. Look, no one is saying you must add trees to your project. It's definitely not always appropriate. But in this tutorial, I'm doing it. It's just my little way of helping the green movement. So in the project panel, I'll drop my trees right below the rain layer. Right away I can see that things don't match up color-wise. Now I could just drop this below the adjustment layer, which would take care of a lot of the compositing issues here, but I'm not going to do that, because later I plan on adding some lightning and other elements that will need to go behind the trees, and I don't want our adjustment layer affecting those elements. That means that they will need to be above the adjustment layer, and therefore my trees need to be above it as well. So let's try some other color correction techniques. With the trees selected, choose Effect, Color Correction, Hue, and Saturation. Then in the Effects panel, 
set the master saturation down to negative 25. And in the master lightness, set that down to negative 50. Then choose Effect, Color Correction, CC Toner. This is an effect which can be used to separately tint the shadows, highlights, and midtones. Great for creating a sepia tone effect, but in our case, I'm going to set the midtones to match some of the lighter areas of our composition. I'll play around with the color here a bit until I'm satisfied. Once I'm done with that, I'll set the blend with original property to 20%, which brings back some of the original color. This will be really important when adding lightning because that effect will lighten the scene up a bit and when that happens, we'll want to see that color. Otherwise, it'll look pretty fake. A little color here will go a long way. Finally, looking at the leaves, I can see that they are much too in focus for the shot. So with the tree selected, I'll choose Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Blur. Then, in the Effects panel, I'll set the blurriness to 3, which blurs things out a bit. If you really wanted to create a focal effect, you could crank that baby up a lot, but I won't. Last thing here, turn on the Repeat Edge Pixels property to fill in the opacity for the blurred edges. And there you go. We have trees that seem like they were in the original shot, more or less. By the way, it doesn't have to be trees. It could be something like a sign or even a person that you're compositing into the shot. So even if you can't create an element like my trees, these techniques are applicable to anything you're adding into your shot. When the colors don't match, the illusion is lost. Okay, now for something really, really cool. In the project panel, let's take our main composition here and drop it onto the Create New Composition button, which creates a new composition the same size and length of our footage, or in this case, our pre-composition. Now, in the timeline, select the nested composition and duplicate it by hitting Control D or Command D if you're on a Macintosh. Then with the top layer selected, choose Effect, Simulation, CC Mr. Mercury. If you scroll through time, you'll see that this effect turns your footage into particles made of a mercurial blobby substance. Technically, it's called an ooze. We're going to use the ooze. Ooh, I'm going to get that trademarked. Use the ooze. Okay, sorry. We're going to use the ooze to make raindrops on the camera. The mercury effect distorts the image as if seen through water, so it should work. First, let's set the X and Y radius to spread out the effect a little. As you can see, if I drag these numbers, the effect expands out a bit. So I'll set the X radius to 200, and I'll set the Y radius up to about 150. No specific reason other than I played around with these numbers and these seem good. It'll be different for your project. Next, I'll set the velocity to 0, meaning that the blob particles don't go flying around. They appear and stay put. Next, I'll set the birth rate down to 0.4, which lowers the amount of particles being created. Also, I'll set the longevity up a bit. I'll set it to 10 seconds. This property determines how long our particles live for, meaning how long they are seen on screen before they disappear. And since I want them to stay the whole time, I've set the number higher than the number of seconds in the composition. Now the particles will move down the screen, not due to velocity, but due to weight. But I don't want that to happen. I just don't like the way it looked. I mean, you can play around with this and see if you get something realistic, but I'm going to set the gravity to zero so that they don't move down. Next, set the influence map pulldown to constant blobs. This has to do with the way the blobs animate on and off, and I want them to just pop on, so this is the setting that I need for that. Next, we're going to set the blob birth size and blob death size both to 0.15. This controls how large the particles are when they appear and disappear. However, I'm not really happy with this. I want some variation in the size, so I'll add an expression to both properties to randomize the number. I'll be using the wiggle expression, which I covered extensively in my tutorials on working with expressions and expression controls. So, in the effects panel, I'll alt-click on the blob birth size property stopwatch to add an expression. And then in the timeline, I'll go into the expression editor and I'll type wiggle, open parentheses, 30, comma, 0.2, close parentheses, which means change the value 30 times a second by adding or subtracting a value up to 0.2. This causes the blob birth size property to randomize at every frame so that each particle will be created at a different size. But the thing is, we also want the blob death size to match the blob birth size so that the size doesn't change over time. 
alt click on the blob death size property stopwatch and then in the timeline use the expression pick whip to link the value of this property to the value of the blob birth size property now the values will be randomized but the birth and death size for that particle will be exactly the same at least that's my understanding of how the plugin works I have to admit I rarely if ever use this effect now as I look at the animation I can see that the dots are all perfectly round that isn't the way it happens in real life at least not always so we need to find a way to make the dots oblong or distorted in some way so with our blobby layer selected choose effect stylize roughen edges that looks pretty good as it is so I'll leave it alone it doesn't really happen too often in After Effects when you apply an effect but in this case it's just dead on finally since the raindrops are up close to the camera and the background is in focus then the blobby raindrops need to be out of focus select the raindrops and choose effect blur and sharpen fast blur in the effects panel set the blurriness up to four all right a quick RAM preview and it's looking good next time we'll look at how to create realistic lightning effects once again this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net if you've ever felt that there was something beyond your understanding something you couldn't see but that you knew existed something you couldn't quite comprehend but that you had faith would one day make sense you're not alone. We can help you make sense of video for the web. Watch Internet Kill the Video Star and renew your faith in yourself. Brought to you by the Ministry for Better Internet Video.